the book really starts with London. And London is, in, in many ways, one of the three or four central characters of this book. Um, and London at this point was at a very interesting moment, a really historically crucial moment, in that it was the largest city in the world. It had about two and a half million people. And no city in, in all of human history had ever gotten that big. And it was dealing with a whole number of kind of growing pains um, from, from getting to be that size without a lot of the things that we take for granted about society, so they didn't have the kind of running water, they didn't have, most people didn't have toilets, um, they didn't have a public health infrastructure that we would recognize today. But they were the size of many kind of modern metropolitan centers. And one of the things that was devastating London at this point in its, in its life was cholera. Um, epidemics had started in, in London in 1832, um, and they'd flared up at various different points, about five major epidemics between 1832 and 1854, when the book takes place. And these epidemics would come through and, you know, 10 or 20,000 people would die in a matter of, uh, you know, a month or two in London. What happens when you die of cholera is that all the fluids in your body are evacuated in an incredibly short amount of time. Um, so that people effectively can lose up to 20% of their body weight in a matter of 48 hours. Um, and when you lose all the water in your body, basically everything fails. Your skin turns very leathery and kind of blue. The eyes sink in, so you have this cadaverous look. Um, but one of the most terrifying things about the disease is you can feel your body failing on pretty much every level. And as you go from, say, being 180 pounds to being 140 pounds in the space of 48 hours, uh, the brain is one of the last things to shut down. Because one of the things that the body does internally is play this kind of game of triage where they devote all the kind of secondary organs um, they ignore and they try and keep as much fluid going to the brain and to the heart. And so the brain actually remains remarkably active even as your body is completely falling apart. So people have, in the kind of historical record of it, and there's a lot of description of people having this strange sense of kind of mental clarity as they're fully aware that they're going to be dead in 12 hours. The central protagonists, really there are two protagonists in terms of people. Um, there's Jon Snow, who was a, in many ways one of the most influential doctors and, and kind of medical researchers and kind of visionaries uh, in London at the time. And then there's this other guy who, who people don't, uh, haven't written very much about, but is just as important to this story uh, as Snow, uh, the Reverend Henry Whitehead, who lived in Soho where this outbreak took place and was, was a real local character. I mean, he knew everybody in the neighborhood and his social intelligence turned out to be kind of crucial to the, to the story. Snow was a very interesting figure in that he was really alone, with one or two exceptions, um, in the Victorian medical establishment in believing that cholera was in the water, which in fact it was. Almost everybody else believed that it was in some form or another in the air, and that the problem really was that London was just an incredibly smelly city, as it truly was. Um, there was just you know raw sewage accumulating in people's basements and being flushed into the river and sitting around in the streets, and there was an incredible amount of livestock you know, in the city streets and centers, people had cows living inside their houses to get milk. I mean, it was just an incredibly noxious smelling place, not to mention all the industrial fumes. And the entire medical establishment believed that this disease that was, that was killing people was coming from contaminated air. It was called the miasma theory, basically. They believed there was poisonous miasma floating around that was causing all the trouble. And Snow was the only one who really was able to understand that, in fact, it was a problem of contaminated water. And, in fact, if you could get clean water, uh, you, you weren't at risk for cholera at all. There was no way to catch it through the air in any kind of way. All of this came to a head um, in, in late August and early September of 1854, um, when a, a very popular local uh, pump, uh, public kind of water supply on Broad Street in Soho, uh, became contaminated with uh, the cholera bacteria. And in one sense, the, the, the fact that the pump was as popular as it was, was was instrumental in how devastating this outbreak was because um, there were a number of other pumps that were around that weren't kind of as well respected for the cleanliness of their water or the good taste of their water. Um, and the Broad Street pump was very popular. And so when it got contaminated, the bacterium just swept through the entire neighborhood. Um, and you had this really extraordinary period of about four or five days when 10% of the Broad Street area died. Snow very quickly suspected, as he started to kind of investigate this, that the pump was maybe at play in this in this outbreak because of his existing theory about cholera. 
being the water. And what he did and what Whitehead eventually helped him do is to go around and track down all these people and figure out basically that this is where the, the cholera was coming from. And he eventually created this map, which is where the title of the book comes from, um, that showed in a sense all the deaths uh, in this neighborhood radiating out from the single point on the map where this infected pump was. And so at this moment of great terror and death and destruction, a, a new kind of clarity emerges in a sense, and a, an ability to see this bacteria that was literally too, too small to see given the technology of the time. Nobody had actually you know, kind of identified it. Um, Snow, through his whole life, never actually managed to see uh, the, the Vibrio cholera itself. But he could see it in the pattern of kind of lives and deaths that emanated out of this pump. And in seeing that, he slowly was able to persuade the medical establishment that they needed to deal with the water and, and not the smell. And that, in a way, was one of the key turning points in creating the safe and sustainable um, cities that, that, that more than 50% of us live in today.